Hey guys, Nick here, and welcome back to another Supergirl episode review. My thoughts on last night's episode of Supergirl titled Distant Sun, and I apologize for this video coming like half a day late. Um, I was just busy last night, you know, and um, right now I'm with my fiance at my parents' house. That's why you guys, rec like, for anyone who's watched my videos for any period of time, you guys recognize the stuff. That's, like, I'm, I'm in my, my, my parents' house, and um, last night we were just busy, and I just didn't have the energy to do the video last night. But um, I did watch the episode live, so that is something I actually was able to do. But um, to get started on my thoughts on this episode, this was uh, a good episode. Um, this was an episode, another episode directed by Kevin Smith. Who um who directed um the mid season premiere earlier this year, and he um he directed a couple of different episodes of The Flash, and this was a it was a fun episode. Um, I'm just my my problem with the CW shows this season, like with Supergirl and The Flash mainly, is that there hasn't been as much of a focus on the main plot line of the season. Like with this with Flash, it's like the Savitar stuff is barely ever there, or he's ever ever only ever talked in passing, and so they happened to like. Up until recently, they haven't really, like, focused on him head-on. And with Supergirl, like, Cadmus is supposed to be, like, the main threat of the season. And they've barely been there. And the last couple weeks have been like, okay, like, where are we going? Where are we going? And, like, obviously the last couple weeks, like, when you when you have actors like Kevin Sorbo and Terry Hatcher who want to come on the show, like, you, you do make room for them story-wise. So it is interesting having, you know, when, when we got the revelation of kind of who Manuel really was and... We kind of see kind of who the Daxamites are and how their culture is and how Monel's parents are and how they want to bring him back to help lead them and how they're and how the politics are there. Like that is interesting, but also not it's not necessarily vital to the story of what's going on in the entire season. It's, I would say it's fairly important to Monel as a character and Monel. Again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Like he's my least favorite favorite character on the show. However, this episode. Like, there are episodes where I like him and I think there is improvement with his character. It's just, don't focus on him as a love interest. That's all, like, his whole thing with the musical crossover last week with the, with the Flash and, like, the whole, like, love thing. First of all, they've been together, like, a week or, or like, a, like, a few weeks at best. And he's already saying I love you, which I think is dumb. Um, and it's the, the romance aspect of his storyline is what I don't care about. Like, I don't mind him... Sorry, that was my dad in the background. Um... That I do just hope that they improve his storyline by just letting him be able to be as be a character who stands on his own and isn't just beholden to just being Kara's boyfriend. And this episode showed some hope with that. And and I really do hope that you know they just improve his character and his characterization by giving us episodes that give him a chance to be fleshed out as a character and be able to be a, be, a, be a character who can stand on his own because that's all I want from him as a character and in this episode one of the things I want to mention before I forget is when they go to the Forces of Solitude when they when Super when Kara and Monel have that first initial meeting with um, Monel's mom Terry Hatcher um, the first shot of there they put a lot of focus on the Legion ring the Legion of Superheroes ring for, for any of you guys who don't know there's a team of superheroes from the comics who hail from the, the 31st century who are from like a thousand years in the future and they're called the Legion of Superheroes and it's made up of a bunch of different people like Brainiac 5 and mon -El's one of them. And they have Lightning Lad and Cosmic Boy and um, Saturn Girl and all these characters who have been in like various animated forms and even appeared in Smallville. Um, and mon -El, again, was one of those characters. So I think they're really starting to tease mon -El by the end of the season is going to be going to the future or he's going to be picking up that ring and become a Legionnaire, which I think would be cool. Because that's, you know, the Monel's from the, the Legion, so I think it's, it's going to be good for his character to kind of branch out his, from his relationship with Supergirl. And it'd be true to how he is in the comics, because I think he needs to be part of a team that can utilize his, his abilities and not necessarily be sidelined by by working with the DEO, even though he, the, 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 the DEO does like nothing with him. But um, I, 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 so when they show that ring, obviously I think that's a really heavy tease of, that, of them and what they're going to do with this character moving forward. Um, and one of the things I joined in this episode a lot was just how they use uh, John Jones and because Kevin Smith he, you, you tell, he's a huge fanboy of these characters so he's going to utilize them to the best visibility so he brought back Linda Carter even though she wasn't there like in person they had her there as you know as the president again and as they teased when they're in her first appearance of this of the show that she is an alien we don't know her intentions either if she's going to end up being a regular on the show or what kind of role she's going to play later on because of the fact that she is an alien, uh, we don't know where her allegiances necessarily lie. But it was cool seeing her in this episode nonetheless. 
and I am really excited to see what they do with that moving forward as well. And again, going back to the John Jones thing, I really thought it was cool to have that, like, that telekinetic battle between John Jones, or not telekinesis, but a, a telepathic battle between John Jones and that one uh, bounty hunter who tried uh, getting Kara. I thought that was really cool and kind of reminds me of Young Justice between McGann and Simon. So that, 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 I don't know if that was a throwback to that at all, but I thought I noticed it and I thought that was really, really cool. Um, what else? Um, the action of this episode was pretty good. Um, there were some scenes that could have been directed better. Um, just because just the fight choreography wasn't at its best and direct, the directing wasn't at its best in the action sequences. The story itself was was cool. And it was this this was the episode where you really started to sympathize with Kevin Sorbo's character as he was he is trying to change and he is trying to show that he's trying to be better for his son. And by the end of the episode, as I called it, um, halfway through the episode, and it was really telegraphed. Oh, sorry, something just fell back there. Um, like so, Terry Hatch ends up killing him because she he doesn't side with her, and so um, she's definitely gonna be an antagonist moving forward. The main she may end up being the main antagonist of next season. We don't know, but. They're obviously setting something forward. Obviously, when she said she's not done with Earth yet, so there's gonna, definitely going to be something mo moving forward with that. So I'm getting curious to see what they do. Um, I'm trying to think what else is there that stops me in this episode. Um, so Maggie and Alex's romance drama in this episode. Um, it was nice having it to where you know it wasn't super dramatic and they're fighting and all this stuff. So obviously, you come to find out that Maggie cheated on her ex and how that comes out we you know with um alex going to see maggie's ex asking because why asking why she didn't come to dinner with them um alex I, I knew what they were trying to do by showing her that she's trying to be a better person and not just focus on the bad of maggie because everyone makes mistakes and that was one of the points that alex tried to make but at the same time it was unrealistic as to how she acted about the whole cheating that she had absolutely no problem with the cheating whatsoever and that she thinks it's okay just to have dinner with her ex. Like, like she's, she's so comfortable with it. Granted, I know that they're trying to show her be, kind of be better and kind of lead, kind of lead by example by allowing them to mend their old wounds and to be civil with each other. And that's great and that's a good, good thing to have. But give me some sense of believability because the people in the real world don't would really react like that, you know? But I'm glad I'm glad they did. I just wish it would handle it a little better and a little more realistically. That, that's just, that was just my only gripe with that. Um... But it's cool. I, I'm glad to see them, the characters fleshed out nonetheless, and that they're really giving a Maggie a chance to be fleshed out more. And 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 even Mag and Alex called her out on Maggie not necessarily being open with Alex ever since what happened with Maggie coming out to her parents or having being like forced to come out because of her parents and that whole situation that we they found out uh, a little over a month ago. So I'm glad to see more of Maggie. I just want them to be. I want to see more of Alex and Maggie in the field together. Or um, just to have um, Maggie just in action scenes more, not just focusing on their relationship, which is fine. I'm, I'm glad to see like an LGBT couple at the, at the forefront of superhero television. I think that's great. But give us more than just their relationship. Give us more of their just their dynamic in general, as well as them out in the field and all this stuff. So to maybe to flesh out their relationship more instead of just focusing on the romantic aspect. As but we could also do more with that. So that's just what I want as a fan. But um. Overall, I, I was thoroughly entertained by this episode. Not the best episode of the season, but it was a decent episode nonetheless. Um, and it sucks because, you know, we're taking a one-month break from the show. And not that that's a long time. And I think it's, it makes more sense for, for the shows to do this rather than uh, on for a week, off for a week, on for a week, off for a week, like the freaking Flash does every week. But it, it, it's a long break. I'd rather have just get it all over with now than have to you have the, the constant coming back and forth. Um... But um, overall, I am excited for the rest of the season. I just hope it's more streamlined and there, there, there's, you know, it's a vision as to what's going to be in the in the finale and how every how this whole story is going to wrap up with Lena Luther and Cadmus and how everything is going to wrap up. I just really want to see that and hopefully it turns out really well because this season has been a really good season. It's been mostly consistent. Um, just because like last season there was there was a lack of focus towards the end because when when, when they killed off Kara's aunt, you you lost a really cool and interesting character, and then you got a villain who wasn't necessarily the greatest villain, and then you had Laura Vandervoort play another villain who wasn't the greatest villain. But um, this season has better villains, so I'm hoping that it wraps up well. So um, with that being said, that's going to be it for me. So what did you guys think of this episode? Sound your thoughts in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up, and hit that subscribe button for all the other content I do on my channel. Earlier this morning, I did a, a reaction review of the brand new Spider-Man Homecoming trailer that you guys can watch on my channel, as well as on Saturday... I uploaded my reaction to the new Justice League trailer, as well as for the fans of the DCEU, 
I did a full commentary with a couple of friends of mine of Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, the Ultimate Edition. So you guys can check that out if you guys want, or if you guys have three hours to spare. It was a lot of fun because we got we delve into what we think about the film and what, and just our whole feelings of the DCEU in general. So you guys can check that out if you guys are fans. Um, you guys can check out all the other reviews on stuff on my channel as well. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, have a good one.